Hey, what's up guys? I'm Jason from Financial Snowball and today I want to show you how I saved $20,077 in 2020 on my $39,000 post-tax income. That's right, I saved 52% of my income in 2020 and I plan to save more in 2021 and I'd like to show you how. Before we jump into it, I want to quickly lay out that I'm not living in a shack eating ramen. I'm not doing anything that you couldn't live a comfortable life doing. I mean, my apartment's $1,900 a month. I simply want to show you the ways that I've found to automatically save money. Now, the purpose of this video is not to brag, but to show you what is possible when living on a modest income of $39,000 a year in one of the most expensive cities in Canada. I mean, just by paying attention to the simple parts of your finances, I'm going to show you how you can squeeze so much more value out of your time and money. And if that's something that interests you, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribed. Uh, you'd add to my nine subscribers, to which between you and me, viewer, a couple of those are me. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd be very excited to grow that number. If you comment down below, I'll be sure to respond to every single comment. Well, with that being said, you guys, I'd like to jump into how I saved $20,077 in the year of 2020. All right, I'd like to start by breaking down my $39,000 a year into $3,200 a month, just to make it a little bit more attainable. I work about 50 hours a week and I commute about 50 minutes to work it back each day. So I'm not living in the lap of luxury. The average Canadian, in fact, makes $54,000 a year, just significantly above what I make. So if I'm able to save 52% of my income, I hope this video can help you save a little bit more than you are today. Before I break down my monthly spending, I would like to show you a little bit about how I organize my money. It's going to be a little different than anything else you've seen on YouTube. I certainly haven't seen it in any other creator that I've watched. I call it hard budgeting. It's my way of financially automating my life for simplicity and to maximize optimization. And if you'll permit me, I'd like to give you an example. I have one main savings account and several smaller labeled savings account for strategic budgeting purposes. Now, I don't do this for small short-term expenses like groceries or restaurants or gas, that sort of thing. These are my medium to long-term financial goals that I have physically separated from my other money within my bank account instead of imaginary separated like you'd see in a lot of other budgeting systems. I'll give you an example of my accounts here, but we're going to focus on these first nine. I want you to notice that none of these nine accounts are a checking account. A checking account is an archaic financial relic in our, fin in our financial system. It's designed to force people to put money away to gain no interest for no reasonable gain. I use my no fee unlimited transaction savings account for all my purchases. The only time I use a checking account is when they force me to, when I want to send maybe an e-transfer or pay with a debit card. Otherwise, I simply use savings accounts because of their high interest and for all intents and purposes, the rest is the same. My main savings account has my emergency fund in it, my paychecks directly put into it, and all my credit cards are automatically withdrawn from a full amount from this account. The goal of hard budgeting is to watch just one number, and that's that number in your main savings account. You let everything else take care of itself. Each other account is labeled with a goal. I have an account called Big Purchases that I use to buy video games, upgrade computer equipment, random stuff I get off Amazon, and I put $75 a paycheck into that account. When I wanna buy something like that, I pull it out of that account. I do the same thing with my car insurance. The car insurance I pay yearly, and it's really expensive in BC because we have one company that gives us car insurance. So it's $2,600 a year. I just put $100 a paycheck into the account when it's time to go pay, pay it, I forget about it. I have another account called car expenses. Who knows when my car is going to have an issue? So I put $15 a paycheck away in the case that my car has an issue. Don't have to think about it. It's done. I know that in a few years, I'm going to have to propose and need a wedding ring and I'm going to have to pay for a wedding. So I started budgeting for that with $30 and $40 respectively. Any purchase that you think you're going to have in the next 
two years, three years, four years, put a label on it, put a goal on it, and you can calculate how much each paycheck you need to put towards it to meet your goal. And then do it like that. All right, all right, you get the idea. Any large purchase you have planned, automate it, forget about it. So pay for every one of your purchases with a credit card, not only for the reward points, but it allows you to automatically track your spending and look at it all through your financial dashboard. I use a platform called mint.com, which allows me to see all my spending, my saving, my investments, all in one convenient place so I can monitor those small expenses and make sure they're not getting out of control. But once I've dealt with all the small expenses and my financial automation system is together, we can worry about the fun stuff, which is getting rich slowly through investing. Without further ado, here are my investment accounts. You don't need as many as this, you just need a TFSA, an RSP, and if your employer offers a match, take an employer match RSP out. And that's it. You do the same thing that we were doing with our savings accounts where you set an automated per paycheck amount to go out so you can set it and forget it and start getting rich slowly through your investments. Now that we talked a little bit about how I save and budget my money, I think it's going to make more sense when I pull up a visual of my budgeted spending for 2020. And I'll show you how I saved $20,077 in 2020 by following this financial automation process. Without further ado, here is my 2020 budgeted spending chart. I know, super exciting. But this is how I saved $20,077 in the year 2020 on my $39,000 a year income. That's 52% of my income I was able to save with this, with this financial automation process. So a couple things I'd like to point out. First, that I'm not good at making graphs. And Grand Stefan, if you're watching, sir, it's an honor. But I apologize for the quality of this graph. I know it's much below what you would expect. Rest of the chart, let's look at our fixed expenses, which is higher than I'd like them to be. But hey, you know what? It was the only option in the area for an equally terrible commute between my girlfriend and myself at 50 minutes each and provided a gym downstairs that we can't use because of 2020. But what I really want you to notice on this graph is that the budgeted spending part of this graph, the part that's most important to me, is already set from the get-go. Most of my income is going towards an RSP or a TFSA or a future vacation or big purchases. Most of it's going towards those things, which lets me solely focus on optimizing how I use that budget to add the most value. But this graph doesn't tell the full story either. There are a lot of behind the scenes financial magic tricks that I was able to pull off and you could be able to duplicate in Canada just by watching this next section. When I talk about spending optimization, I'm talking about getting the same thing, the same item for less simply by paying for it differently. I'm going to give you four examples. First example is using the NBC World Elite MasterCard to pay for my rent, which reduced the amount my rent cost me effectively by $50. I did this by using their welcome bonus that gives you a $40 credit for every $500 you spend a month. My rent's more than $500 a month. I partnered with a service called Get Digs that automated my rent payment through my credit card with an e-transfer from my landlord. The NBC MasterCard also gave me points on these, and Diggs charged me 1%. So all in all, you crunch the numbers, it saves me about $50 a month on rent, simply for paying for it differently. That's $600 a year I was able to reinvest into my TFSA and RSP by paying my rent with a credit card. That's number one. Number two, buying groceries different. I used the PC MasterCard, will delete card, to buy all my groceries from Superstore, but I also subscribe to the PC Insiders program, which gives me free grocery pickup and increases the amount of points I get on certain products. You then optimize the way you're buying them to take advantage of the promotions you have. You know, spend $125 and get $25 off in points or something like that. Only buying during those promotional periods, I was able to save effectively 14% of my grocery bill paying with this card which saved me about $480 in the year of 2020. Number three, I used the Tangerine MasterCard to make none of my purchase less than 2%. 
cash back. So I put my restaurants, my furniture, my bill repayments all on this tangerine card, which yielded me 2% on these expenses, saving me $280 in the year of 2020. Awesome. Throw that back into the RRSP, into the TFSA. Number four is I use Wealth Simple's Roundup to round up all of my connected credit card purchases and automatically invest that back into my RRSP. Without me even realizing it, I invested an extra $65 in the year of 2020 using this service. Didn't even think about it. More money towards retirement. Amazing. Make it automated. This is a simple short list of the things that I've done, but I promise in a future video, I'll give you more examples of what I've been doing to automatically reduce my expenses while still retaining the same value. Thank you so much for watching guys. I hope that this video of how I saved $20,077 in the year of 2020 on my $39,000 a year income was helpful to you. I know for me, I'm humbled to have you watch this video and it would mean a lot to me and my current subscriber count for to have you subscribe or drop a like or comment on this video. It truly helps me out in growing this channel so I can make more videos like this to help you save money. I post new videos every Monday and Friday. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on Friday.